All right. So I haven't done one of these in a while, um, but it's going to be a short video, and, and I do mean short, so I'm not going to go too much into um, the practices uh, and techniques, etc., that I'm going to mention. Um, there's a lot of information available on Google. Plus, um, I find that so many people want you to spend 90 minutes talking about something that they could do a, a simple two-minute practice and experience themselves. And uh, so I don't want to, um, you know, rob you of the benefit of, uh, of your own um, findings and, and muddy the waters. Um, but I want to talk about uh, three things that I found have a synergistic effect, uh, not only with each other, but with CAP. And, um, and oddly enough, they're pretty popular these days and they're consider, uh, considered uh, dude bro practices. And I kind of wanted to dispel uh, some of those myths. Um, and uh, talk about an effect that doesn't often get mentioned unless you really um, corner someone and, um, and kind of make them talk about it because it, it gets into the, the sort of woo-woo uh, aspect of it. And, you know, again, these are, are marketed more as uh, health practices, etc. So again, that's where they get into the, the sort of do bro things because a lot of bodybuilders and, and uh, people, health related people, um, uh, do them. The first is um, no fap, okay? And specifically the, the uh, 90 day no PMO reset, um, which is excellent for males. Now, for females, uh, you can either do the, the hard reset, the 90 day, you know, um, and, and PMO, it means uh, porn, masturbation, orgasm. Um, again, a lot of females, uh, uh, a lot of women that I, I know um, have problems connecting to uh, the orgasm. So it might be beneficial more to just cut out the porn aspect if that is becoming. But if you're, if you're spending too much time, you know, if you're addicted to masturbation or orgasm, and, I'm, and this uh, is in no way, you know, condemning porn, condemning masturbation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's perfect time and place for everything. Um, but this is if you, you have a serious addiction to it, sort of. And, and a lot of us do have that um, to some degree, you know. Um, so even the questions that uh, I've answered before about lust, this is something that can really help, uh, help with you. And um, the good thing about it is if you cut out porn, and, um, and this includes something and, and is connected to something that we, we tend to do too much these days, even when we get into relationships, you know, um, everything's in our head. And so we always, you know, send nudes, etc. Um, and it's like, why, why do we do that? You know, wouldn't you rather, rather than look at your partner's naked body, wouldn't you rather, you know, have that and, and touch them and, you know, and, um, and, and have them experience pleasure along with you. Um, so it's, it, and it goes way beyond even sex. You know, I think a lot of our, our, things these days that we have, um, I, I don't want to say problems, but I will, um, is because we're disconnected with reality, you know, and, and again, problems is not the right word for it. Um, but it's, it's, you know, uh, we, we look at these pictures and, and, and everything's in our heads. And the funny thing about it is, you know, this is considered a dude bro practice, but uh, it, it does, within males, it does tend to bring out the feminine aspect. Um, David Data, uh, Mark Manson, several others, um, you know, mention whether scientific facts or, or just, you know, um, common knowledge that uh, men, we're very visual and we, we tend to think, you know, uh, a lot of it tends to be cerebral. And so when you cut out that aspect, you know, where you're watching and looking and or reading, etc., 
and then having these, or, or even if you don't have that and you're just having these, these uh, digital, you know, um, videos playing in your head while you're, you know, you're, you're frantically uh, trying to get off, um, then, um, you know, uh, that disconnects us from reality. And I think it has placement even outside of our sexual expressions, you know, um, how we relate to our environments, how we relate to people, how we relate to um, uh, task and, and our goals and etc. cetera. Um, so, um, and it does tend to harm partnerships. Trust me on this. It really does. The whole instant gratification, consolation prize would send nudes and et cetera. Um, it, it just does not work. Um, I mean, it can work, you know, you can work it, uh, but it's, it really is a lot easier, especially if, if you found, and even if you haven't really realized it yet, but if you, if you go back and take a look at some things that may have damaged past relationships, um, you will probably find that these have some placement within them. Okay. Uh, again, going through these pretty quick. Fasting, okay? Here are the three protocols. Uh, you may or may not know, but I've, I've done very many fasts over the last couple of years. Uh, I call it nonstop fasting because I go through different fasts and I, I try out these different methods every single day. Uh, here are the ones I've found um, that work best. Dry fasting, but only for 24 hours, which is funny because a lot of experts say um, you're not technically dry fasted until at least 24 hours. Um, but I do think doing too much over that can hurt you, especially if you don't follow um, the correct protocol for coming back into being rehydrated, etc. You can really damage yourself. So uh, I found that 24 hours is more than enough. Um, to do it, especially if you're taking care of yourself during the other times and you're not just, you know, eating a, a shit ton of McDonald's and, you know, then going into a dry fast. That may not have, you know, much of an effect for you. Uh, intermittent fasting, uh, I call this the Louisiana Tech Protocol um, because the first time I heard about it uh, was on a radio program. Um, and uh, they were the ones that were, uh, were touting this, uh, which is funny because it was on a national radio program and Louisiana Tech's like 20 minutes away from me. Uh, it's where my brother uh, got his bachelor's and master's before going on to his doctorate. Um, and so it's the 18-6 uh, protocol. So fasting for 18 hours, eating six, especially within an 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Time, uh, time frame. Um, and I find that really only works if you're doing a, a keto or cyclical keto, especially cyclical keto, keto um, uh, where, like say, you're doing keto for six days and then you have a cheat day, etc. Um, and then the other protocol, which is one of my favorites, um, and it's the one I've been doing on a weekly basis later, which is a 72-hour plus bone broth fast. Um, I limit myself to three cups, and that's actual measuring cups. Um, about three, three and a half uh, cups of broth, uh, bone broth, per day, and uh, but I do add in a uh, a keto coffee with the MCT oil, the grass fed butter, and uh, Himalayan pink salt, etc., and organic coffee or tea. I'll use matcha sometimes. Um, so roughly, my calories are staying within uh, 200 to 350, somewhere around there. Uh, per day, which is not much at all, especially for 70, more than 72 hours. Um, okay. Um, but these three things, um, again, the specific things that they tend to work on, and these things do get mentioned, and later I'll talk about the, the synergistic effect of all of them and the effect that doesn't get mentioned. Um, uh, Nima, in uh, the esoteric writer, writer in EMA, in one of her books, talks about... Um, doing a fast and then working on the root chakra and like having food in front of you and then you know fighting but if you've done fasting a lot then you know you can have food in front of you and it's not a big issue this is more for people who don't often fast um, and it's sort of the dealing with um, 
uh, with these ideas of, of gimme, 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 like I gotta have that, you know, if I don't eat, I'm gonna die, um, and has basis within some of the, the other uh, uh, negative root chakra um, aspects, which is, you know, like not having enough, um, being insecure, uh, not being rooted, etc. Uh, which again goes into that whole gimme, 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 instant gratification um, that we talked about earlier. So, you know, um, all of these things are clearing out the chakras. And you will notice um, if you do these that they will clear out the chakras. Um, one thing I might not have noticed within the, the NOFAP, and again, Google search, uh, the 90 day non PMO, so you don't watch porn, you don't masturbate or orgasm um, for 90 days. That's the hard reset. The softer reset is where you can orgasm if you have a partner and, you know, etc. But they do say to do the 30 days um, at least of no orgasming. Um, so it, we, we're just coming off of November so that uh, if you, if you um, participate within, you know, uh, no nut November, then, you know, shouldn't be any, uh, it shouldn't be hard to do that reset for you. Okay, um, the last one is cold exposure, and especially the Wim Hof method. Um, the Wim Hof breathing, not really tumo. It, it often gets labeled as dude bro tumo, um, but if you've done actual tumo practices, you will notice that the effects are very differently different. Um, tumo, of course, you know, you can feel the fire. I have literally. Um, warmed it, it was like uh, below freezing and we didn't have central heat uh, in our house at that time um, the house that uh, that I lived in and literally warmed the room enough where I had to turn off the the little space heater that we had the electric space heater and um, and it stayed warm for the rest of the night the whole rest of the house freezing cold that one room <laughs> was off the charts warm and that was just for me doing different tumo practices um, but it is the, the Wim Hof method is extremely um, useful and effective for uh, not only cold exposure um, but especially for cold exposure that goes along with a five minute cold shower and you can do a contrast shower like I usually do where you, uh, you turn it on really warm and, uh, and you take your regular shower very quickly, you know, you soap off and, and do all that. Then you turn all the hot water off and you just, for five minutes, you, um, you, do, your, you do your thing in the cold shower. You just stand there and, and get hit, basically. <laughs> um, uh, this really is useful for, you know, getting in touch with our, our excuses. It's so easy to make excuses and say, ah, you know, that, uh, screw that. Um, our cringing, like our internal cringing, and um, a lot of solar plexus stuff, you know, um, our, our, our will, you know, our striving towards goals, our, our running towards pleasure and away from uh, not pleasurable or pain or whatever, or, um, or, or even just um, how easy it is for us to give up, etc. So, uh, and other things that I can't currently think of, but later I'll be like, oh yeah, I should have mentioned that. All right. Um, now, you may have noticed these are three old hardcore practices that are usually involved within, you know, some sort of, of monastic meditation, you know, um, or, or religious or spiritual path. Uh, celibacy, fasting, and some form of austerity or giving up uh, uh, pleasure, you know. Uh, some form of giving up pleasure. Um, and so they're very effective. They have synergistic effects uh, with each other. So uh, if you're going to do them, I would recommend doing them all together. Uh, if you can be that hardcore, I, that's what I do, you know. Um, and it is, it is hardcore, trust me. Um, but <laughs> it is, uh, you know, sometimes we need to be hardcore with ourselves. Um, but you can do them little bits at a time, um, you know, whatever works for you, your mentality, your personality, etc. cetera. Um, you know, find some way to incorporate these. Now, the effect that doesn't get mentioned before I run out of uh, space on my phone, um, uh, and that's being drawn to bad habits. It has a, 
an, a meditative effect um, and cat also has this effect and so they really work very synergistically with cap as well um, and that's being drawn to bad habits again the kundalini process you know um, uh, it's almost as if the blueprint of uh, the mind body etc is, is resetting and so we're being drawn to certain things you know bad habits that we may not be aware of or we may be aware of but if we're aware of them you know what's the source and so um, you can tend to find yourself dislocated within a memory um, and uh, drawn to uh, even a repressed memory and drawn to um, something within that memory that is the source of traumas, bad habits, uh, uh, annoying things, you know, the things that make you slap your head and go, yeah, I'm my own worst enemy and, you know, why the hell did I do that, uh, etc. cetera. Um, as well as, and I think this probably has, um, especially within fasting and cold exposure, has something to do with uh, the de decrease in inflammation. And all three of these things that I mentioned, the effects may um, have, again, uh, 